You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 23rd, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where everything is a HIPAA violation, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Blue Gal. Nothing's a HIPAA violation. Everything's a HIPAA violation. I'm not a medical doctor, so I don't get to give out HIPAA violations. The, the thing you just said is a HIPAA violation. <laughs> I feel very violated right now. I feel HIPAA violated. This is the podcast for July 23rd. That's a HIPAA violation. A violation. Um, <laughs> as you know, I worked for a large metropolitan city area that... Uh, had a very big and complex case management tool that I helped design, actually, and and so forth. So believe me when I tell you, I do understand what HIPAA violations are and what HIPAA is and what can and can't say and to whom you can and can't say it. You are perfectly within your rights to volunteer medical information to anybody you want to talk to. And they're perfectly within their rights to ask you as long as they're not an employer or other official organ like that who's prying into that, that in ways that are specifically prohibited. If I'm a case manager, I can't say, oh, crap, look what this guy's got. Look how horribly he failed his drug test. Hey, Phil, come over here. Check this out. (laughs) That's a HIPAA violation. Yes, it is. A reporter asking someone if they're vaccinated is not a HIPAA violation. But Marjorie Taylor Greene is very stupid. And it's that that thing where this is like Candace Owens this week, too, and a bunch of other of those type of people where you just don't know if they really are that stupid. Uh, I think in Marjorie Taylor Greene's case, she really is. I don't. I think she's some sort of human platypus hybrid. I don't know where or what she comes from, but I don't. I don't think her species is long to survive past this mm-hmm. generation. Mm-hmm. But um, or are they just like supremely confident that the people who listen to them and vote for them really are that stupid? I I, I don't know. In the case of Marjorie Taylor Greene, Marge as we Marge. call her, Marge, yeah. I, I don't know what her deal is, but with some of these Republicans, it absolutely is a hatred uh, and an internal understanding of just how uh, brainwashed and stupid their base mm-hmm. is. And they just feed. I mean, Kevin McCarthy is a perfect example, and we're going to yes. get into all of this. But absolutely, he cynically is pursuing the stupid voter who watches nothing but Fox all day long. And that's if you, if you out there in listener land need one short uh, a nugget, a, a fortune cookie understanding of, of the right, why the right does what it does. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with tax policy or HIPAA po- violations Ever. or anything. No. It has nothing to do with any of that for as long as I've been alive and can remember things, the rights single most consistent behavior has been hating people like us. Mm hmm. Loathing us, everything that ever went wrong in the world is our fault. Where and 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 it was a free fire zone during all the the Iraq war years, during all the Bush years, nobody ever got in trouble for calling us traitors and monsters and scum and terrorist loving cut and runner. Nobody nobody ever lost their job over that. Nobody ever lost their job when they found out that none of that was true. That in fact liberals were right. So everything the right believes is in orbit around this deep hatred of the left that they have been told um, is the real enemy. Every other enemy comes and goes with, with fashion. The left is always uh, the Emmanuel Goldstein of, of the right. And so I think it's important that we not allow that kind of mentality to get inside our heads because our job first and foremost is to make the world a better place. That's true. It's not to fight against conservatives. And no, although no. I have a big, huge post-it note on my <laughs> on my com- work computer I, that says, cool. mm-hmm. punch conservative, mm-hmm. because at Crooks and Liars, that's my job. Well, and I, I yeah. I, no, I, I, this is by way of saying, there's so many people who, who really do know better, who continue to yeah. stumble over this. Well, how can they believe this? How can they believe that? How can they believe the exact opposite of what they believed last week? Because... Or that that you can reach them with reason. You can persuade them. If you just talk nicely to them, if you don't make any sudden movements around them, you can sort of coax them into, no, 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 no. None of that is ever going to work because they believe 
whatever you think is wrong. Whatever mm-hmm. you believe is the enemy. So if, if liberals come out in favor of the Constitution, they want to burn the Constitution. If they come, if deficits are bad, deficits don't matter. War is good. War is bad. Um, uh, George W. Bush is a is a god on earth and a genius. George Bush, who never heard of the man. Mm-hmm. You, you can go down a, a list of thousands of things. These people swear they believe on a Monday and swear they never said on a Tuesday, and. It always will trip you up if you think, well, well, how can they believe that? If you just maybe if I just confront them with both these things, no, 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 it doesn't work. Their brain, that part of their brain is just gone. They just know if liberals want it, it must be evil. And I know what liberals want because because Sean Hannity tells me so. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so it's not hard to understand why they react in or predict how they're going to react to anything you do. And we're going to talk about Nancy Pelosi in a little while, but it's it's just that easy to do it's it's like predicting hot weather in the summer in arizona okay, but drift class what is what is your explanation for the flip-flop this week of hannity and some others on the right steve scalise uh-huh and all of a sudden you know mitch mcconnell get those well, shots in the arms right well, now is it just the stock market is that it's, it it's the stock market and lawyers got involved yeah it's people with money called them and said what the fuck are you doing mm-hmm. look I'm all in favor, um, this imaginary phone caller says, mm-hmm. of, of killing as many of these idiots out there as, as you want. As long as we keep replacing them with more idiots who will buy our shit, I don't care. You know, these people clearly don't value their own lives. Why mm-hmm. should I care if they live or die? Right. If they're, right. You know, it's that, honestly, it's that thing that, that Hitler said at the end of his reign mm-hmm. when, he, when, you know, when Berlin was declared a frontline city and he refused to leave. Mm-hmm. And, and it was like, well, the German people made the mistake of electing me. Right, appointing, making me powerful. This is their fault, you know. Mm-hmm. If they get yeah. their throats cut now, it's on them. This is this is the people who run the Republican Party saying, the people who elected us are really are that stupid. And if if they were dumb enough to elect us, fuck them, let them die. But but, but if investors are uh, saying, uh, oh, you know, ten more months of COVID is going to hurt our bottom line, yeah. and we really want to rent cars at Christmas time, we really really do. Or yeah. the lawyers yeah. get involved and say, you know that um, three or four lawsuits is all that it would take to bring down this whole network. Yeah. yeah. So you have to have a little asterisk yeah. so that so that the people who are listening to this tripe all day long will still continue to believe that there's some doubt about it. You know, mm-hmm. Sean says one thing, but, you know, Tucker says another. Who knows what's true? I think I'll go with my pre- preconceived notion that it's all a liberal plot, blah, 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 blah. But this is this is like the little cigarette warning pack, little packet on the cigarette warning. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, it, yeah. Technically, uh, we should, we're supposed to warn you this shit will kill you, but we know you're hooked, and we know you can't stop. So yeah, we satisfied some lawyers, and you're going to continue to buy it no matter what we do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so anyway, mm-hmm. that's my short explanation. And we saw evidence of the manifestation of this phenomenon. We did. Before we get to that, I just want to mentioned that in my lifetime, Mm -hmm. I have been to a doctor's office where when you sign in at the clipboard at the desk, you put your social security number on the clipboard that everybody who signs in after you can see. Yep. So we've made some improvements. Mm -hmm. Don't ever write your social security number Mm -hmm. on a clipboard, by the way. (laughs) No. Uh, We've, I think Obamacare has made some improvements in how, Doctors' offices use computers and and uh, protect data, uh, and HIPAA is also a thing for doctors to obey and not reporters, and certainly not Georgia Congresswomen. Yeah. Um, and another, and uh, one more thing, and that is Ronnie Johnson. This is just to keep keep related items together. Mm-hmm. Congressman from Texas. Yes. Ronnie Jackson, excuse me, former uh, doctor to Donald Trump. Yeah, former White House surgeon, whatever. Well, why aren't yeah. you asking Democrats if they're vaccinated? Yeah, 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 why are you yeah, asking yeah, Democratic yeah. Congress people why they're if they're vaccinated or not? And Eric Swalwell came out and said, asked and answered, hundred percent, hundred percent vaccinated. Uh, we're asking <laughs> uh, why you're all covered with shit because you're covered with shit. Yeah, that guy's not. I can see it. I can smell it. And he'll tell me right up front. So we're asking you because. Dude, you're the problem. Yeah. You know? Let's let's just be very clear about that. Republicans <laughs> are the problem, and yep. the Republicans yep. are the problem because they've been trained like like circus animals to automatically hate whatever it is that you liberals value, that we liberals value, that we we think are important. 
So if, if you're, a, let's say, a black president and you come out and say, look, I've got this great health care um, um, thing that's market based, it's Republican based. It, it's not it's the government. Romney care. Yes. It's Romney care. It's like, it's communism. They're out to kill us. The black man wants to kill my grandma. That's yeah. that's always going to be until this generation of Republicans is all, are all dead. That's all going always going to be true. They're just never going to stop being this because there's no way back for them. So you have to factor that into your tactics. Like, all right. So tell it. Let's talk about our yeah. our little trip last weekend. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, went out of town for my birthday, uh-huh. and uh, Drift Glass took me to a nice restaurant. I did. <laughs> Can I talk about that for a minute? Sure. Talk about whatever we you went, want. It's your podcast, we, huh? We went to, um, and we've talked about this before. We went to Firefly Grill. Yes. Which is in Effingham, which Effingham is a real city in Illinois. Yes. It is not fucking ham, although I, no. a lot of people make jokes about that, but it is effing ham. And uh, there's a restaurant there that is farm to table. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not white tablecloth fancy, but it's elegant in terms of fo- good food. And, yeah. uh, and the know, farm is right behind them. I mean, the, the farm is right behind them with the literally. fresh vegetables. Yeah. And it's, you know, price rangey is, is pricey. Um, it's a birthday have, anniversary restaurant. It's a birthday anniversary restaurant for us. That's what mm-hmm. it is That's for what it sure. Is. Mm-hmm. But we went Saturday night, and what we didn't realize is right up the road from this restaurant is yeah. the um, Effingham Performance Center that has concerts. And they were having that night, that Saturday night, an REO Speedwagon concert. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Drift Glass is giving the extreme bullhorn yeah. sign here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, we didn't realize that that was what was going to be going on at this restaurant when we walked in. Mm-hmm. Uh, shortly after we sat down, they all left to go to the concert. Yeah. But- and you know what? A lot of the REO Speedwagon uh, attendees who came to the restaurant didn't realize you need reservations. You need reservations on a Saturday night at this so restaurant. So we swagged on past yeah. them and <laughs> sure took did. our seat. Oh, no, there's a reservation for us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right over here, sir. Right over here. Right, man. right. Yeah. Um, but the also... Uh, the Bud Light, <laughs> the yeah. Bud Light tables was yeah. pretty. We, we were kind of cracking up because this is a place where you go and you know farm to table, and they have wine selections for yes. your entree. And here are these tables covered with Bud Light bottles. It yeah. was. Oh, uh, so they spent sad. an awful lot of money when they could have gone to Chili's up the street for yes, the Bud they, Light. Yes, they could have. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, but we did that, and then we dro- It's about a t- little under two hour drive. Yeah. Which gives me some knitting time, and Drift Glass gets to listen to his favorite podcast. I will not let him listen to the Bulwark. No, no, no. no we listen to uh, we listen to Kareem Jabbar's Sherlock Holmes novel. Yeah, Kareem Abdul Jabbar's Sherlock yeah. Holmes novel. On Which the is way, really good, yeah. by the way, it is yeah. really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we, I knit, and he drove, and that works out very well because Drift mm-hmm. Glass is not, he's a very good driver, and he's not that great a passenger. No, <laughs> when I'm driving, and I don't I like have to a lot drive, of suggestions. I don't like driving, so no. that's fine. Uh, well, you, well, you teach three kids how to drive. You, you end up having a lot of suggestions about <laughs> what people should do behind the wheel. Park over there. No. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but while there were two points to, at which while Drift Glass was driving, he stopped the car to look at something. One was a McDonald's parking around. lot. Yeah, got to turn. Well, I'm just saying one of them, I actually turned around and yeah. went Turned back. around yeah. and yeah. took a picture of, yes. Yeah. Uh, these pictures are up at your blog or on your Twitter or both? Uh, blog. blog. I don't have a Twitter account. Oh, that's so, right. Driftlast.blogspot.com. So right. Yeah. So uh, one of them was a QAnon minivan. Right. With uh, something to the effect of Biden is as useless as your mask or your mask is as useless as Biden or something yes. like that. Mm-hmm. And it had the where we go, one we go all. Right. A nice initials. family van in a McDonald's parking lot on a Sunday morning. And they were probably spending their child care tax credit, too, probably. at McDonald's. I'm so guessing. That was yeah. hilarious. Uh, and then um, we're driving home, and we drove through Beecher City, Illinois, mm-hmm. which is a population of under 500. Yep. And there is a sign that says, McKinley says, I'm white and I'm proud. Uh-huh. Coca-Cola. Right. <laughs> and it's like outside this garage that you can drive up to yeah, and this is station. a sign for their business mckinley says i'm white and i'm proud mm-hmm. and 
that's when Drift goes, I got to turn around and get a picture of that because <laughs> that is just flat out racist and I don't care what the context is. Mm -hmm. We need a picture of that for the blog. And it's half a block, and just to contextualize this a little bit, it's mm -hmm. half a block away from some rusted out former manufacturing center, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. like old washing machines and metal and shit on the outside. Mm -hmm. And it's it's several miles up the road from a coal mining museum which is not the famous coal mining museum that's <laughs> elsewhere or the second most famous coal mining museum, which is elsewhere as well. This is the third most famous coal mining yeah. museum. Yeah. So this is where this is Trump country. Anyway, it is. And, and there's an awful lot of, um, and I'm not saying anything bad about this. A lot of mm -hmm. veterans memorials all yes. along the road, like yes. one after the other, after the other, after there. So you've got to assume that with Trump country, there's some ex military along the road, mm -hmm. along the road. Um, but here's this sign. McKinley says, I'm white and I'm proud. Yeah. <laughs> and you took a picture. I did. And you, you went home and did some research on who McKinley is. Yeah, McKinley's the dog. The dog at the service station, apparently. Because there was an obituary for a man who passed away in the town. And one of the lines on his uh, guest book or funeral book was, and he had a special affinity for McKinley, the dog of, at this service station. So... Um, so, you, so you imposed all of your racist bullshit yeah, on a dog. You dragged the dog into this. Yeah. You had to drag the dog into this. Yeah. yeah. But so, this is, this is, this is house. And th again, this plus the minivan plus the, you know, the Trump hat that greeted me when I was walking into the. Oh yeah. When I had to have my heart, my, I'm fine, but I had to have a test on my heart yesterday mm -hmm. and we walked in and here's this super annuated person. Yes. <laughs> As many of the people in the heart doctor. Yes. office are um you said it was a dress code to wear dress shorts and knee socks and, and crocs yeah <laughs> yeah it is if you're a man of a certain age you have to wear that or you have to wear jeans with side pockets which i am wearing right now by the way there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> um but this was a guy who who has reached the age where his clothes and his skin and his face have all faded to the same gray color yeah yeah except his hat which was bright red and said trump 2024 and, you know, they're not hiding anything. No. They're not ashamed of anything. They're not pretending to be someone other than they are. Um, the, the contrast was also in Beecher City. We caught a glimpse over over a very high fence of the, of the very top of a pride flag. Yeah, pride flag. Yeah. So there was someone in that town who was flying their pride flag in their fenced in backyard where really <laughs> it wasn't visible to anyone but them. And that is where we live. Yeah. So they're yeah. not making any secret of who they are, what they believe, turn on any fucking radio anywhere in the great Midwest and listen to any AM station that features talk and you'll hear this shit and you've been hearing the shit pouring out of it for 30 years. I'm going to be really interested to see what Republican turnout is in Illinois mm -hmm. in November. Yeah. Now that Rodney Davis Now that Rodney Davis has lost, lost his prime seat on the uh on the on the 911 or the January Sixth Commission, yes. On the Treason Committee. Mm -hmm. Treason Committee. Uh, so let's talk about Ron DeSantis for a minute. Yeah. Um, Ron DeSantis is many things, all of which are horrible, but he's also an entry point into understanding what the hell's going on on the other side of the aisle. Mm -hmm. um, Ron DeSantis, who knows damn well that one in five of all new COVID cases in the U.S. is occurring in his state, this week signed executive orders to protect vaccine refusers. And he raises money attacking the public health officials like Dr. Fauci. And he appears on Fox regularly to deny and minimize COVID risks. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm borrowing a little uh, a mention on Twitter from Tom Nichols, mm -hmm. who, you know, I have I have feel uh, feelings about Tom Nichols and his honesty and why this guy would call himself an expert when he's been wrong about everything and pretty snitty about it. But this is a correct observation. On Twitter, he referred to an incident from a book uh, called Dying of Whiteness, How the Politics of Racial Resentment is Killing America's Heartland. Very much the Beecher City story. Very much yeah, the Effingham and I, story. We, we own that book, and I wrote a review of it on Amazon. I read the whole thing. I'll talk yeah. to you about that in a sec. But tell, but tell us about this. Tom Nichols cites uh, an example from the book in which a man who was dying of liver failure said he'd rather die than get help through Obamacare. That's how deeply, deeply fucked in the head these people are. And as I've said many times, these people are sick and dying literally because they refuse to change the fucking channel. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> they just won't stop listening to people who lie to them every goddamn day. And um, so, but Tom Nichols uses the, the example of the Obamacare guy to as an entree to this video that came out this week of a Republican voter, uh, which was on display this week, this guy who's been hospitalized for COVID pneumonia. He's mm-hmm. in his hospital bed um, saying that he would not get the vaccine now. And even knowing what he knows now would not have gotten the vaccine before he got sick. And he was furious that they, whoever they are, are trying to shove it down my throat. No, and what they're like, trying to shove down your throat is the uh, ventilator. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what they're trying to shove down their throat. Yeah. And there's just story after story of these people who either are on their deathbed saying, can I have the vaccine now? It's like, sorry, that's too, too late. late. Too late. Or their family just looking at them like, you know, you, you put the gun to your head mm-hmm. and we told you not to do it and you did it and now you're sad. But these people who are dying for no reason other than they listen to Fox News. Mm-hmm. And 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 the, the thing is, okay, fine. These people are are dead set against getting a vaccine. They're 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 tr- they're absolutely obstructionist to everything. They fought against everything I believe in, mm-hmm. all the health healthcare reforms we want. Um, they're gonna fight against infrastructure, they fought against the the COVID bill, they hate Dr. Fauci, they hate they just hate everything that's good for them. And the question then arises, well, whose fault is that? And apparently it's our fault, Blue Gal. No, it's Democrats' fault. It's yes. Democrats' fault. We're not nice th- enough about asking no. them to get the vaccine. Well, yeah. and there's a thing called Merck's Law, which um, I think Lawyers, Guns, and Money quoted, uh, cited this, or, or not cited it, but invented it, which is the widespread assumption that only Democrats have any agency or causal influence over mm-hmm. American politics. Mm-hmm. I think we mentioned this last yep. week. Yep. Democrats are the only people who could influence anything or change anything. Republicans are, are feral children for who, who, who have no responsibility for anything they, they do. So because that's the story, and that will always be the story in the mm-hmm. mainstream media, you get like this headline from the National Review last week. Vaccine resistors can't be persuaded if they feel disrespected, Blue Cal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And from the Washington Post this week, the Washington Post, by one of their regular columnists, an asshole named Gary Abernathy, who I'm going to read a little bit of his column now. Stop insulting Trump voters and their concerns. Talk to them. And this is what he wrote, just the first couple of paragraphs. When supporters of former President Donald Trump hear media pundits analyze them with their usual collection of belittling observations, they must be tempted to respond, hey, we're right here, we can hear you. Very much like we could hear you coming out of our radios for the last 30 fucking years. Yeah. Um, Yes, they are indeed here and living among us, and they have every right to be insulted by being accused of believing a big lie and by the implications that they are violent or traitors or mindless sheep, racist sheep, of course. They're fed up with not just the overt insults, but also with the more subtle digs. These are the people whose motto was, fuck your feelings, Mm -hmm. when Donald Trump was running for president. Oh, and worse. And worse. No one refers to President Biden's followers. It's a word generally reserved for adherents of cult figures. Now, here's here's the last little bit I'm going to read. I live in Trump country and was a Trump supporter until he lost me with his actions after the 2020 election. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a dumb fuck, asshole, racist scumbag who was perfectly okay with everything Trump was doing until he committed overt treason and lied about it. And then he lost me. Mm-hmm. But don't insult me. Don't disrespect me. Don't speak ill of me because then that might hurt my feelings. But most Trump voters have stuck with him. With Trump's encouragement, they sincerely believe the election was stolen. They're not racist. They're not traitors. Some of them think anyone who accepts Biden's win is a traitor. Yeah, of course they do, because they're brainwashed morons. Some of them think I'm traitorous, or at the very least, I've succumbed to the evil influences of the mainstream media for accepting Trump's defeat. Because they're in a cult. They're in a cult. And and, and um, first of all, let me go back to this Dying of Whiteness book, because I uh-huh. didn't It's very that. good. Uh, that example is good, and that book is good. The one thing that it leaves out is evangelical Christianity. Yeah. It just, it's a blind spot for the author. Um, so I just wanted to add, make sure that got added. Uh, and this part about um, they sincerely believe their sincere belief is all mm-hmm. that matters. Right. And that's the, you know, Oh, that's just your opinion, man. It's, it's the whole, yeah. Uh, you know, my opinion is, is it, is as valid as your facts yeah. at all times. And, yeah. and and all of the bodies at Jonestown sincerely believed a lot right. of crazy shit too. Yeah. And it got them killed. And the yeah. Heaven's Gate people sincerely believed shit that got them killed. 
And I don't care. You know, a lot of people, since I, every person who flew a plane into the World Trade Center or the Pentagon had a sincere s- belief. Sincerely believed what they were doing was righteous and right. Mm hmm. The, the level of your sincerity and uh, your sincere belief in the crazy shit that you believe is no measure of anything other than how completely lost you are to reason and how completely pointless it is to try to deal with you on any kind of civic human level. Because well, you can't and now be- we're all sitting here terrified because when Donald Trump isn't reinstated as president next month, right? we expect outbursts of violence from these mm-hmm. sincere believers. Right. And I sincerely believe that that should be met with overwhelming force by the police and the military. Yeah, right. Um, that's my sincere belief. And you really and can't I hope that me. the FBI is infiltrating every single person mm-hmm. with the potential to ha- and and infiltrating and watching their social media accounts of people who are likely to create pipe bombs because Donald Trump isn't reinstated in August yeah. because they believe QAnon. Well, and this whole, you know, treat them gently and don't make any sudden movements. And, you know, they're, don't call them snowflakes, even though they are fucking snowflakes. Again, these are the fuck your feelings people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just disgraceful that anyone would actually write an article that says, please don't speak harshly of the crazy people who are mm-hmm. destroying America. But it's completely backwards. It is those people who have zero respect for anyone who doesn't tell them exactly what they want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. They're the ones who freak out when anyone tells them anything. Who tries to sh- introduce new information yeah. that goes against what go Laura Ingram told them last night. Yeah. Right? They have yeah. contempt for doctors and the nurses who are trying to save their lives. And frankly, for decades, they have felt 100% free to vomit out their contempt for the left morning, noon, and night all over radio, all over television, all over their yeah. blogs, all over their newsletters. And, they and, felt- and if you say, look, liberals have a, a sincere belief in making the world a better place mm-hmm. it's fuck your feelings t-shirt well yeah. and this this is this has hating the left yeah it has become such a natural part of their vocabulary and mind they don't understand why anyone objects to it but that's again i don't want to get that into my head mm-hmm. i agree with you that the place to go and punch against that is the center and oh, the yeah. beltway media yep. that that publishes op-eds like that in the Washington Post Mm -hmm. in order to back up this belief that what the right sincerely believes has validity. Right. And And so that brings us to some, we're we're gonna, we're gonna respond to a request from several listeners. Yes. Several listeners have asked. Um, Matt, Matt wrote us, he tweeted uh at us and said, Hey, blue gal, what I wouldn't give to hear you guys go off on the pod about these <laughs> new pieces from Chris Saliza at CNN. Yeah. That Nancy Pelosi has doomed the one six commission by making it too partisan mm-hmm. and how Democrats biggest problem for 2022 is wokeness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're what you, what you might want to give is five bucks a month. <laughs> right. right. I, well, depending, you know, on if that goes along with the, Gourmet coffee guideline. Exactly. We, we, we don't want to overdo, but <laughs> five bucks a month wouldn't wouldn't kill you, would it? <laughs> what um, you wouldn't give. There you go. <laughs> and our fake sponsors are not delivering the way they used to. Let me just say, <laughs> a lot of them have, have had bad pandemic experiences and have had to tailor, you know, suck their business back well, in. Well, you know, the Biden administration coming in, uh, hello fascist at home meal delivery system. Right. No one at the Biden White House needs that. So. Well, and you know what? Uh, to be honest, uh, none of our fake sponsors got PP p loans no um, none um so you know <laughs> thanks does that leave us? <laughs> out out in the middle of nowhere out in the cold um the reason i mean i've written about crystalism before on my on my little blog uh, oh and we know. do have a rule that on mo- on weeks when we discuss crystalism we do not discuss david brooks just exactly. so that you will not get an overflow situation. well that, but that's actually the point which is yeah, yeah. crystalism along with many 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 other pundits and including David Brooks on most days, are this human centipede of bullshit like this. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. you know, where one goes, all go. You know, they all lurch to the same conclusion, the same horrible takes. They all have one fucking brain between them, and they all come to the same conclusions, which is, in this case, Nancy Pelosi is to blame for the fact that Kevin McCarthy put um, time bombs on Mm -hmm. the committee, tried to smuggle an explosive to the committee, and she told him no. Yeah, and that's Nancy Pelosi's fault for not letting him do it. Um, uh, Saliza is um, uh, w- extremely well paid. Uh, CNN asshole. 
And everyone knows it. There's mm-hmm. no reason on the in, on earth why Chris Saliza should have a job anywhere that doesn't involve hot apple pies and French fries. There just <laughs> isn't. There's nothing he writes that's any good. There's no takes that he has that are, that are valid. He had, hasn't had a, an original idea, as far as I know, ever. His job is to sit there as a rep from a reputable news source and repeat Beltway wisdom and blame both sides, which... You know, the giant meteor that should have killed both siderism forever was Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And it didn't. It because it can't, because this is all they have. There's no place for uh Crystal is it to go. Mm-hmm. Because if he starts saying, you know, the real problem is that Republicans are out of their minds, Crystal is it will stop having a million dollar a year contract with CNN mm-hmm. and will end up with you know, selling hot apple pies and, and french fries somewhere. Mm-hmm. So that's his life. Um and the point of that is not just that. <clears throat> Excuse me. That Chris Saliza is a terrible person, a rotten reporter who who has the worst, shittiest takes out there. Um, and just go to Wonkette if you want to see the real headline. Chris Saliza knows who's to blame for Jim Jordan and Kevin McCarthy's actions. It's Nancy Pelosi, right? And this goes back to the Democrats being the only agency, right? The if, only people. If, who... if Republicans fuck up, it's Democrats' fault. It's always. If things now, if Demo- things go go Democrats' way, it's Democrats' fault. If Trump wins. He, it's a legitimate win. If he loses, Democrats cheated. And right. on and on and on. It's the same line. Well, and, yeah. and if Trump, when Trump won, it's it was Democrats' fault. Right. Uh, and it, it was, and it <laughs> it was, was like, a messaging problem. It was a nominee problem. It was, it was, okay. it, yeah. yeah and, right. and you can go through, and as I did at some nauseating length, you can go through the actual reporting that was done by, by goofs like um, Matthew Dowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, who were just like both sizing the shit out of everything. There were a thousand columns by people like Saliza and David Brooks and and uh, and and Dowd and the rest of them who just occupied all the oxygen space during the entire election, saying, "Well, you know, Trump's bad, but but Hillary's bad too." There's really no difference between the two. They're both <laughs> right. equally corrupt. Both equally sister. <laughs> you know, she has emails. He has you know potential felony and sexual predator convictions, but pretty much they're the same thing. Same thing. And it wouldn't stop. They just wouldn't stop. And then when Trump, because they never thought Trump would win. No. They thought, we'll, we'll shit all over Hillary because that's what we do. Then when she wins by a narrow margin and can't really govern very much, we can say, look, see, look how fair we were to both sides. Yeah, we and, her. and she doesn't really have a mandate because, right. you know, she, she was running against Trump. So, okay. right. And then when Trump won, they all pretended that they had nothing to do with it. This is right. the, the universal hand washing of all responsibility is something that, that Republicans do all the time and that the center does all. It's always the left's fault mm-hmm. for everything that happens. Mm-hmm. And what happens is the shit that Chris Saliza produces is immediately weaponized on Fox News. So yes. within hours of the Saliza story, what do you hear on Fox from Harris Faulkner? Just today alone, we've seen journalists and editorialists from Politico and CNN talking about, well, that may take a jab at this commission by Nancy Pelosi, even mattering if there are no Republicans on it. Yeah. And that's going to be the story from yep. now on, how Nancy Pelosi sabotaged no, the yeah, bipartisan committee. No, yeah, this is Nancy committee. Pelosi's partisan witch hunt. Yeah. You know, yes, that's what it's going to, that's the way it's going to be and, rolled. And what there. you have to understand is Chris Saliza's of the world do not give a shit about democracy or the Constitution or, or any of it. Or yeah. fact. All of which are basic the, the basic building blocks that made their profession possible. Yeah. Having a First Amendment, having a constitution and a democracy that protects them is what makes Chris Saliza's profession possible. But he doesn't give a shit about any of that stuff. So that's why all of them low-key wrote off the GOP, as I said before, as a gang of feral children decades ago. Feral children from whom no one should ever expect any self-control or responsible behavior. We just, we just shrug it off. Well, that's just Trump. That's just Republicans. You know how they are. Therefore, whenever Republicans do something horrible, it never even occurs to the crystallism of the world that they need to step up and hold the bad people who did the bad thing accountable. Mm -hmm. Instead, they automatically frame every story as the left being at fault for failing to sufficiently control the right's insanity. In the media, the right is always the dogs. They're always the hound dogs that shit wherever they want, while the left are scripted as the pet owners who have to follow along behind them with baggies and pooper scoopers and are responsible if the mess isn't properly cleaned up. And everyone is happy with that relationship, except, of course, us. But 
the it, the center gets to be the center forever and continue to pretend that both sides are bad no matter what happens. The right gets to get away with fucking murder. No, and and they, I want you to connect that to the next thing, which is why you almost never hear actual conservatives and actual liberals on the oh, same yeah. podcast. Well, um, yeah, I'm listening to uh, the Gene and Roger podcast, which is lovely. It's about Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. Hmm. And it's really good because they were rivals. They were both Chicago writers. They were both rivals. They never spoke to each other, almost never spoke to each other um, until they were forced to. And they were put on the same show. But they they didn't hate each other. They were both people who had very strong opinions about movies. (laughs) And they both had no problem voicing those opinions. In fact, that's why they were paid for what they did. They wrote strong columns about what they deeply believed was a good movie and a bad movie and why it was good and why it was bad and why you should see it or why you should not waste your money. And somebody figured out, put them on the same stage, and it took a lot of tries to get this right. And they became rock stars because they argued passionately about a subject they both deeply cared about. You will almost never hear any actual conservatives and actual liberals on the same podcast. And the reason is really simple. The people who are still Trumpers are insane. There's no point in having any conversation with them at all because they're going to look at you like, well, you know, vaccines got the chip in it. And th- and that's where the conversation ends. Yeah. Because I can't, I can't do that. I cannot patiently sit and sift through someone's bullshit and madness for 60 minutes or 50 minutes or 10 minutes or two minutes these days because there's nothing to argue about. They believe a set of things that are factually wrong and they believe them passionately and there's no way to talk them out of it. So there's no point in having a conversation. Meanwhile, the never Trumpers are mostly delusional. Mm-hmm. They are what doing what are essentially pale imitations of what we on the left have been doing for decades, but they sever it from any idea of history or personal responsibility because they are all terrified of anyone mentioning the past, you know, when they were on Team Evil, when they <laughs> built the machine that caused Trump to become this destructive force. Yeah. They don't want to talk about that. And that is something I deeply want to talk about. And so an example I, I use this week is, is I listened to Alice Stewart who who has worked for every awful Republican going back 20 Ted years. Cruz. Ted Cruz, Mike Huckabee, oh, yeah. um, Michelle Bachman. Uh, she just, she, she's it like, she takes a list of the worst of the worst and says, yeah, I'll get that asshole elected. I'll get mm-hmm. that asshole elected. And she and Michael Steele were on Michael Steele's podcast. And they were both talking about the future of the Republican Party. And it wasn't just that they're both completely delusional. But they're both delusional in completely different ways <laughs> that reflect their their deep failings as human beings and as civil members of society. And you wrote a post about this at driftglass.blogspot.com. I did. Give us the 50 cent tour. It's Alice Stewart believes that Trump is fine, that we mm-hmm. should just keep him along, keep it. You can't win elections. And she only cares about winning the midterms, the upcoming midterms. That's all she cares about. Doesn't care about reforming the GOP. Doesn't care about fixing anything because she believes a lot of horrible shit should actually become policy. Right. That Michael Steele agrees with. So she loves that Trump is going to drive turnout in twenty twenty two, and loves let's it. embrace him and make him if the could just, person of the party. If right. He just no, he just calm down a little bit, and and his followers are fine. We should all keep him in the party. That's just fine. We what we need to do is sort of create this this cladding over it of what she calls rational Republicans. We're going to bring the rational Republicans, which don't exist at all, into the party and and create a shell around the crazy. And then people will vote for us. Then we'll win elections. It'll be great. Then we can get rid of abortion and we can get rid of birth control and we can have a million guns in everybody's hands. All the crazy shit that she wants to do, we mm-hmm. can finally get it all done if people would just stop saying the quiet part out loud, mm-hmm. and which is insane because there are no rational Republicans to bring into a party that is fundamentally racist and irrational. Mm-hmm. Michael Steele, on the other hand, thinks that's terrible because the, the the Trump supporters are racist. What he wants to do is kick out 90% of the Republican Party from the Republican Party. He wants to kick out the crazies. Get, get them all out says, of there. And then, and then every, the Republican Party will be more attractive to yes. everyone. Right? Non-existent people who want to come in <laughs> and get rid of abortion and, and, and not have any gun control and delete Obamacare. But- are not racist. Yeah. <laughs> so the people who will support all my shitty policies, but won't you know, scream N word, N word, N word, uh, the they get a chance or feel offended when you tell them to stop doing that. So his, and his I, loved, I loved your uh, analogy about the spoons. Oh, Baskin. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Steele's goal idea is to, is to get rid of all ice cream from Baskin Robbins 
and just keep the spoons and the cones and the napkins that people will just flood in to get that shit. <laughs> That's the real attraction. And the reason he thinks this will work is because sometime in the early 90s, he was like party chairman in some county in Maryland and got some shit passed. So, you know, it's possible because Maryland <laughs> has a bunch of Democrats in it, but I got some stuff passed in the, you know, 30 years ago in a different universe. And so they're, and so he's in, so his, his theory is a whole bunch, you know, millions, tens of millions of, of rational Republicans will just show up and suddenly the party will have even more people in it than it does today. And both of them are out of their minds. Yeah. <laughs> both of them yeah. are making shit up because they can't face the fact that they built a party of bigots and imbeciles to win elections so they could pass shitty policies. And you can't get rid of the crazy anymore. That's the party. And so the idea of debating with them is nuts because the first thing I'm going to ask them is the question they will not answer. And if you ask them on Twitter, they will block you. So if you'll notice, all of these people only go to venues where everyone agrees not to ask them any hard questions, which is why you will never hear an actual conservative and an actual liberal debating anything, which breaks my heart. Yeah. Because you and I both remember, you know, 20, 30 years ago when you could actually have a debate with conservatives. Yeah. I yeah. thought there And their it was policies... intoxicating to have yes. a debate with conservatives. I'd love to have a debate with conservatives about actual tax policy and actual- I would love to too. You know, actual spending and how you-, how you uh, Prison reform, gun yeah, control. Prison, how you convert your values control. to spending? You know, right. infrastructure. How do you, how do we spend money? How do we work? How do we work to m- make this country better? Do, uh, do I think there are social programs that need to be um, um, updated and amended and fixed? I do. I absolutely do not trust conservatives to do it because every time they get their hands on power, they take away shit from people who need it the most. Yeah. So you I, can't I, trust. I them. also do think that um, at, uh, Admiral Milley or Go- General Milley. Yeah is a very capable person. And I think he is capable of producing an audit that the Congress could look at. I bet he could. Of how the Pentagon spends its money. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't seem to be able to do that. And I think that's wrong. Yeah. So (laughs) let's figure that out. A couple couple items before we get into our news roundup. uh Uh-huh. I want to I came across, uh, and I found out this is kind of an old story, so forgive me for that, but I just came across it. Um, Louisiana, which, you know, has, has bad COVID cases. That's us. a lot of problems. That's yep. not what we're here to talk about today, but no. they do, they have an issue uh, <laughs> along with many other Southern states. They have an issue with low vaccination rates, but they have actually a robust public health department, um, run by women. And, mm-hmm. and you watched me have tears in my eyes over, you know, seeing how many women were working for public health. Yep. In Louisiana. Because they get it done. They get it done. And Mm -hmm. they want to get it done. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a project that started, I believe, in 2017 to um, end hepatitis C in Louisiana in five years. Mm -hmm. And what that meant, and this is amazing, is that they negotiated with a drug company because hep C medication, hep C is curable. Mm-hmm. And the drugs are there to cure it. You take the drugs and you you cure yourself of Hep C if you take the drugs. Mm-hmm. And but they're very expensive. The state of Louisiana negotiated with the drug companies, said we want to do this project to eliminate Hep C from our state, uh, and that includes prisons, that includes underserved populations. We want to do this, and uh, they negotiated a subscription model of we will pay you. So that you continue to get money from us. And as we find a patient who needs hep C drugs, you will provide the drugs. Mm -hmm. And it was a negotiation of the prices. Now, there is no reason that Medicare (laughs) can't do this. It's it's the will to do it. We we won't go up against big pharma. Mm -hmm. Um, And and the other thing, the reason I found out that there was an article in Governing Magazine about an app that IBM has helped the state develop and in a public private partnership. Um, It's a two part app. One app, one part of the app goes to patients and the other goes to providers and medical professionals. Um, It's an app that lets people uh, find testing centers. It will privately and with HIPAA confidentiality, send them (laughs) their test results. Uh Uh, Then it provides them with a path to treatment. And uh, make sure that they receive 
uh, covered, supported uh, appointments and the ability to get the drugs that they need in order to cure themselves of hep C. Mm -hmm. Uh, They are working within prison populations to get this drug to those people and get them tested. Um, Actually, that's a little easier because you know where these, you know, incarcerated people are. Um, But this app for people that are not incarcerated, this app uh, for the patient provides them with their appointment reminders and so forth and gives them a reward. And I think it's in the form of a gift card. If you make, if you make three appointments, come Mm -hmm. in and get treatment, you get a gift card. Um, you know, because getting healed of help C isn't enough right. for a lot of people. Cause it's, you know, it's no symptoms until you're dead, um, or dying. Uh, it also gives rewards to healthcare providers Wait to a minute. follow up and call this... your, call your patient and check on, check on them. Do they need a ride to treatment? Do they need a, a ride to the pharmacy? Do they, what do they need? This, this sounds suspiciously like Obamacare. It, it does sound like. A lot of do-gooders in yeah. from Obama world mm-hmm. are putting this together, doesn't it? Yeah, well, um, rewarding uh, healthcare providers for good outcomes and for rewarding good outcomes, people, yeah, and making sure that people show up for appointments and treatment, yeah. Uh-huh. So um, that's it's just awesome, and it's just a lovely thing to find out and to have a goal of five years. We're going to eliminate this terrible disease and making sure that prison populations are included, and all of it is just you know this. But but you and I were kind of smirking at each other about oh my god public health <laughs> yeah well and <laughs> and, and spe- where speaking- you know here's an app find your vaccine get your vaccine vaccines are free maybe we need a gift card you know if you go to walgreens and get a vaccine they give you a five dollar gift card they do well, they and just you know, do you know uh there's nobody on fox news saying don't take the hep c drugs yeah uh, no it's no. a liberal plot to uh, liberal put a plot chip in to, your head. Yeah, to, to make sure you go to prison or something. I don't know. Now, speaking of states that are doing things right. Yeah, I get to talk about our state. Our state. Do I get to talk about that? Absolutely. Go, go to town, baby. Because <laughs> I want a J.B. Pritzker for governor sign in our front yard, if you don't mind, Drift Glass. I, I know people who know people. I can get yeah, you Yeah, I think we know I, some people. Yeah. Our governor, J.B. Pritzker, is running for re-election. Yeah. Which, <laughs> you know, I'm going to vote for him. Yeah, me too. <laughs> But it's more than that. Today, he signed a bill making Illinois one of uh, the few states in the country providing over-the-counter birth control. Mm -hmm. Not only that, the bill also expands Medicaid to cover over-the-counter birth control. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He shoved it right down our throats, Blue Gal. He shoved that birth control right down our throats. Damn And then in the paper this morning, he is proposing a plan for his second term. Mm-hmm. For something called free community college and mm-hmm. free universal pre K yeah. classrooms. Yeah. And I can tell you, as someone who is an expert in early learning and early intervention, uh-huh. our district in 186 will use that program to expand within the schools. So Absolutely. it's a feeder program mm-hmm. for their kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And that allows you to do early intervention screen out, find kids who have autism or language delays or reading deficits or social deficits in any way. You find them at three or four, and then they have support all through. Once they go to kindergarten, that transition is easy and they have services and services and services. So um, we have an early learning center right now in Springfield that takes in um, typical students people who do not have developmental issues right. for a fee. And then also uh, students with autism or other learning disabilities go to that early learning center as a pre-K program for free. And that it, they that way typical peers are a big part of the education system. I'm, I'm, go, I'm blabbling on, but. No, it's great. No, this is great. But this the is early great learning news. center right now is mm-hmm. a limited program. It's a half day program, which is terrible for parents who need to work. Mm -hmm. Um, if J.B. Pritzker can get this to be a universal program where you, within the school system, it is assumed that the child will go to school at three and a half, four years old. Uh That gets a flood of kids that you might have missed in the screening program for autism, for developmental, other developmental disabilities, social deficits go away. Um, it's just remarkable. And you know, you know, you, Biden wants to do this anyway. Right. Um, 
Well, you said this is the Biden agenda. Yeah. Pritzker met with Biden last week and said, now we're you now, and now we know. Yeah. He told gonna, Biden, I'm just going to go ahead. Yeah. Catch up if you can. But, Catch up uh, if you can. I'm off and running now, which is funny. I got if you a ever Democratic seen... Senate with, with no mansion in it. Yeah. <laughs> I love JB. Anyway. I And he's a billionaire. And we had a billionaire before him who was terrible. Who was terrible. You and I were talking but about He didn't the, care. The, the billionaire before him didn't give a rat's ass about people. That's, no, at all. I, yeah. I, I swear he would have used the pandemic as, is there any way we can get tax cuts and bust a few unions? Bust a few with unions this, using with this plague. COVID. <laughs> yeah, I swear that's how he would have handled it. Yeah, um, yeah. But the point being, as as you put very wisely, um, Pritzker has a plan. He has a plan. He does. Uh-huh. But it is um, a whole bunch of cool programs that we think are awesome. Um, you know, community college and pre-K and healthcare and all the stuff you want. Plus, there's infrastructure going on all over the state. Oh, uh, every day is yeah. a new highway program. Getting We're getting high-speed rail in Springfield um, that will go from St. Louis to Chicago. But as you yeah. said, he's, his plan is to make Illinois the California of the Midwest. Yeah. He, wa- he wants this to be a place that people move to yep. for the benefit of living here. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's going to happen. You said we need to put a toll road up. I do. I believe a toll look, booth. <laughs> between Missouri, Iowa, and us on one side, Indiana on the other side. There needs to be a fee. It, it, I mean, if you're escaping them, we'll give you asylum. We got cool shit. There's plenty of little towns that could use decent people to take the uh, I'm white and proud signs oh, out. Yeah, and, 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 hang, and hang up a pride flag. <laughs> yeah. There are plenty of people, plenty of places where we need people like that to do things like that. Yeah. That is honestly why I moved to Springfield because I was up in Jan Schakowsky's district where everyone is left of me and you need to be more down here, I think, than, than up there. Um, well, and, and that's the thing about down here though, is that, that I hope people recognize as the affordability. Yeah. It's, and I'm telling you, if you're a blue dot in a red state and you're thinking of retiring and moving somewhere mm-hmm. where housing costs are lower than where you are, you couldn't do better at this point in time. I am a real advocate Move to Central Illinois. Move oh, yeah. to Springfield. Move to Springfield. Change, yeah. flip a few districts while you're at it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, Florida is going to be basically an archipelago uh, in a few years. Oh gosh. Um, and California is having water issues. Uh, California is uh, gorgeous, and we love the, our friends who live there. And it's mm-hmm. uh, it's, but California was is a desert. Mm-hmm. that stole a river to make it <laughs> blossom, to make it grow. It's not intended to be, you know, verdant farmland. And they're having well, real... Well, and housing is very expensive there. That's yes, that's my exactly. point. Yeah. Is you could sell your house in California and buy four houses Yes, in <laughs> central Illinois. Yes, you could. Absolutely could. <laughs> or you could buy entire towns based on the, the drive we, we went through. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah. But yeah it, well, there are is... nice houses in... I don't want anyone to move to Beecher City, but no. Pana and there's some other towns over there that have every that have everything that you could need. Yeah, and houses are seventy thousand dollars for a two bedroom, one and a half bath house, and you yeah. can you know it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not asking anyone to move to a deep red district surrounded by bigots. I'm not no. asking people to do that. We're asking you to move to larger communities that would fence those districts in exactly and not allow them to leave. <laughs> and um, I'm a big advocate for that. So. Mm-hmm. And if you come visit just to look around, we'll have coffee with you. Yeah. We'll we'll tell you the whole thing. I'll I'll give you the nickel tour. I'll show you where Lincoln's buried and the house that, that Frank Lloyd Wright built. And that's it pretty much. That's that's the tour. And we, um, we had uh coffee last week with a lovely couple. We did. We who did. are newly engaged and we want to congratulate them. We very much do. They're they're great folks and I, I sensed strong kindred science fiction convention spirits in them. <laughs> you certainly did. I certainly did. From the we get-go. Had, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, oh, I know you. I, I know, know you. you. You guys are science fiction types. You are, yes. You're on my tribe. Oh, let us sit and talk about Dune, shall we? <laughs> yes. All right. You want to move on to uh, news you might have missed? Oh, Lord. This is yeah. this video, it's it's cop cam. So I'll warn you, that it's, it's not violent. But just so you know, this is body cam footage that has come out today. People are directing tweets to the Florida ACLU <laughs> after Captain Kip Beecham of the Seminole Sheriff's Office was literally passed out behind the wheel with his engine running in the middle of the road. 
deputies let him go with a fist bump and no sobriety testing after they learned who he was. Uh I'm sorry, man. You're good. Just leave. This didn't happen, said one of the deputies. Wow. You know what that is? That's about seven episodes of The Wire. Yeah. With McNulty getting absolutely hammered, getting behind the wheel. And, you know, but he's good police. Um, Well, I don't, I mean, I just don't understand at all. And and by the way, this this body cam footage shows the black and whites pushed up against his back bumper and up against his front bumper like you do Uh when someone could be armed and dangerous and you don't want them to move at all mm-hmm. and you actually sandwich a car between two police you know sheriff's office vehicles and here's here are these sheriff's deputies giving him a fist bump and saying you're good to go and they let him drive away yep and you know i i get that you protect your boss and you you know whatever but you've got number 1 you've got a body cam on and number 2 you allowed him to continue to endanger himself and everyone else around him. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's not going to fly. It, it's that <laughs> it's that culture that needs yeah. to stop. Yeah. yeah. I, I understand being loyal to the people you work with. Yeah. I understand, you know, keeping your team high morale, especially if you have a, a shitty job to do or a hard job to do. But this, this covering up f- of bad cops by other cops as mm-hmm. a matter of course is, is why we're having the problems we're having. Mm-hmm. And if you are not capable of policing your own people, it is high time someone with a, a more sober eye, no pun intended, yeah. did it for you. Um, because well, that's, did, he, did he drive off and kill himself? Did he go out, drive off and kill somebody else? Did he kill a puppy? Right. Because that Don't would know. really get people's attention if he yeah. killed oh a puppy. Oh, my God. He killed a puppy. Yeah. All right. Let's do some news roundup. All right. You know, the Biden administration transferred its first detainee from Guantanamo Bay and repatriated him to Morocco. Uh, The Biden team is picking up where the Obama administration left off with the repatriation of a Moroccan man, reducing the island's prison population to 39. Let's close Guantanamo. If you can end the war, let's close, close Guantanamo. I want to close Guantanamo. I want to not just close it, but reuse it. Because there's lots of Americans uh, who work for the Trump administration who are going to need to be kept. <laughs> to be in an, in an isolated prison an population. Isolated location with a lovely climate and access to a beach. <laughs> I don't see any reason why, you know, this couldn't be Trump, Trump Guantanamo Bay. And, uh, they could get put them on a cruise ship and float them there. Sure, yes. <laughs> sure. Because, you know, as, as you know, Blue Gal. Yeah. Uh, from the Trump administration, if you're on a cruise ship, your numbers don't count. Right. Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. Trump's longtime friend and ally, Thomas Barack, was accused of trying to use his influence to help the United Arab Emirates, and yeah. he was arrested this week. Yeah. This was the this was the case where he was running a speech past them that Trump was going to use, yeah. uh, and and they had this on MSNBC last night where you can literally see the moment in. Trump's, I think it was uh, May May of 2016. His energy against, speech. Yeah. Yes. Railing against the awful people, the OPEC countries were going to be energy independent. And you can't trust those people. They're screwy every time. But let me just take a moment to talk about our friends in the Gulf. And <laughs> it was just like, oh, this is this is the moment where the, the quo kicked in. You know, the, and the they quid- did just cut and paste a totally – unrelated sentence that right. talks about our friends in the Gulf. That and, was vetted yeah. by that, that Tom Barrick passed through the right. UAE to get approval for yeah. Trump's speech. He showed him his speech. He said, oh, yeah. you need to put a sentence in there about our friends in the Gulf. Oh, okay. Okay. Is that Do I get paid for that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There'll be money. Yeah, Don't yeah, worry yeah. about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, according to Democrats and Republicans who spoke to CNN, Ted Cruz is currently blocking diplomats from being confirmed for reasons that have nothing to do with their qualifications. Um, this is an extraordinary effort by Republican Senator Ted Cruz to block nominees from being confirmed to vital jobs in the State Department, and it's creating huge problems for the Biden administration and harming U.S. diplomacy, uh, which is the point. I mean, mm-hmm. destroying mm-hmm. the machinery, screwing Democrats, kneecapping them, and then blaming them for not being able to run is the whole point. Attorney General Merrick Garland formally prohibited the seizure of reporters' records, mm-hmm. reversing years of department policy. Garland formally prohibited federal prosecutors from seizing the records of journalists in leak investigations with limited exceptions. Yeah, high time. And he's doing a lot of stuff I don't approve of, but this 
Absolutely. Uh, during the FBI's botched vetting of Brent Kavanaugh, the agency got 4,500 tips about him and did nothing with those tips but hand them over to the Trump team. Uh, this is a quote from uh, Sheldon Whitehouse, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse. This long delayed answer confirms how badly we were spun by Director Ray and the FBI in the Kavanaugh background investigation and hearing. They just lied about it. They covered it up because they wanted this asshole in the Supreme Court for the rest of his life. The NFL just announced that any team that is unable to play because of a COVID outbreak will forfeit the game, be responsible for financial losses, and the players won't get paid. Yeah. Hit him in the wallet. Hit him in the wallet, man. Uh, This week, after Nancy Pelosi announced that no arsonist would be invited to the investigation of how the fire got started, John Kasich went immediately to CNN, where he complained that Pelosi shouldn't have objected to Jordan and Banks and, quote, should have left well enough alone. Remember, Kasich is one of the good ones. Mm -hmm. Another way to look at this is that Nancy Pelosi doesn't believe in the no-win scenario. Yeah. I think she's doing that Kobayashi Maru just fine. I think she's doing fine because there's no winning this situation when it comes to Republicans. So fuck them. Toss them off the committee and have that fight. Um, So far this year, the Trump pack has scammed the rubes out of $75 million, none of which has been used to fund election audits. I really still wonder about Trump's agreement with Win Red. Yeah. And his too. agreement. I think that's why Kevin McCarthy keeps going to visit Trump mm-hmm. for lunch or breakfast or whatever, is he's got a deal with Trump to use Trump's name in fundraising newsletters yeah. and needs, emails. He wants, he wants his allowance and he's yeah. got to go down to Mar-a-Lago to get his allowance. You got to go to, to Bedminster and drink a cup of coffee with him because his name is on the emails that go out from the Republican Congressional Campaign Committee. I still think they should change the name to Bedwetting Mister, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Bedwetting Mister, yes, um, yes. And and this is in, in local news because it happened right next door to us in Missouri. The Missouri Supreme Court says the state must begin enrolling Missourians in Medicaid expansion. This was passed by a ballot measure, but Republican state leaders, surprise, surprise, had refused to implement it. Well, and the deal with that is there's a little bit more of a deal, and I do understand the the people of Missouri cannot pass a ballot measure that requires the legislature to spend a ton of money, and right. that's why they sued. But this ballot measure did not tell the legislature to spend a bunch of money. It just told them to expand Medicaid. And the fact is that right now, with the Biden administration being so generous with states <laughs> about expanding Medicaid, that the legislature really can't make this argument anymore that, oh, it's going to bust our budget. So this is bullshit. And the will of the voters has to be taken into account. And if they don't fund it, guess what, Missouri? You can vote those people out. Yeah, and this well, can be an issue. This this is another example of why why would you not expand health care to people who need it the most in, in a your pandemic. own state? In a yes. pandemic. And the answer is because liberals are evil. Right. Because That's it. I don't There's, want to because of liberals. Yeah. You don't need to think a lot mean. past that very no. simple yep. understanding of how their minds work. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty are two lambs. <gasps> Carter and Georgia are toddler sheep at the Soul Homestead Farm. And these were sent to us by dog-faced Herman. Carter and Georgia look like they are posing quite professionally. I would... I would say these were Photoshopped sheep if I didn't know better. Mm -hmm. Carter and Georgia are very friendly. Both lambs love head scratches. And Georgia hasn't quite figured out that mom is her only source for milk. So don't put your (laughs) fingers too close to Georgia because she will try to nurse your hand. Nom, 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 nom. Nom, nom. It's breakfast. Nom, nom, nom. It's lunch. Nom, nom, nom. Yes. And of course, Carter and Georgia eat freshly poured sheep food. Our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your sheep will sit in their paddock and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Carter and Georgia at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, sheep, iguana, anything to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. 
feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag jail to joy. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address, buy me a coffee, all of it is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, look out, the Internet Kitties want to make it very clear that asking them where they got that dead mouse is a HIPAA violation. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.